GM. Okay. Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, so uh, we're, we're going to be looking at some extremely tough chess puzzles. Uh, so we'll get onto that soon. I might I might play a bit of chess later, but I was actually wanted to. I don't know about doing a bit of training, but I wanted to um, do something a little bit different. And I, I'm playing a tournament in April. So at some point I need to do a bit of work on my own game as well and try to try to get a bit competitive ready again as I haven't played any serious chess tournaments myself for a long time. And um, I think there's a couple of ways to do that, which uh, I've always done, which always worked very well. Uh, number one, if you're gonna go and play a tournament, let's say your first over the board tournament or any over the board tournament, which I'm playing in Reykjavik, um, you want to make sure you're happy with your openings that that's for sure so you want to know before you go to the competition what openings you're, you're going to play because if you don't know what openings you're going to play then you have to flaff about a lot of the tournament and it's extra stress so you've got to have some openings ready but everyone can work on their openings in their own time and um i will be this time around using um this website i'll do this for you will <laughs> this website g chess to to prepare for the tournament uh this website that i created with uh, some others because this is an opening based website and it has i think the best resources that you can get out there obviously you know you, you do have to pay a little bit to get those resources but it's really for competition chess but another thing i think is very important is to just um make sure you're sharp so doing puzzles is, is one thing but even better than puzzles and this might be a bit slower pace today uh the, what we're going to do but even better than puzzles is doing studies now what's the difference between a study and a puzzle a study is generally something that's being uh, created so it's not from a game but it can be from a game and some of the things i'll look at today are probably going to be from games but they are extremely tough they're often very deep and they contain some extremely beautiful visually beautiful ideas and i love these studies i mean one of the reasons i love chess is because of the the beauty that you can get with how the pieces work um some concepts which are mind-blowing uh, in my opinion and i really think you you can see beauty in in chess from studies so i'm just gonna have a look at some studies on online and these studies um are sort of a, a combination of various resources but a, a friend of mine um international master ali mortazali very clever guy he he uh he sort of gave up playing chess i guess in his 20s to do stockbroking and now he's the ceo of a uh a company I can't remember what company <laughs> but he was putting together some studies that i've added to uh, and i'm just going to go and have a look at some of these because like i say they're very hard but i'm going to play through them uh, now i actually have the answers in front of me and i'm going to try not to look at it but i probably will and um i'm 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 gonna with some of them you know we're just going to do it in stages and, and try to work out the right right way to think when you're in a situation like this obviously we know in the positions i'm going to be giving you that there is a winning plan we know that already um so that's that's an advantage but we get this in our real games and one thing i'm going to try to avoid doing a bit more coming near to the competition i'm playing is blitz chess i don't believe blitz chess is very good before a tournament maybe a little bit but i've really got to cut it down and i think getting into the habit of spending a lot of time thinking about a position five minutes ten minutes before you make a move is very important which people nowadays struggle to do because they're just playing blitz all the time they don't ponder a position for a serious amount of time but if you want to get better at chess over the board chess then it really is important to um ponder a position and really concentrate on it for a long period of time so this will be a lot slower pace today so get yourself a cup of tea or something i've got my green tea for a bit of energy um we'll get started soon and uh like i say this might not be for everyone this but i think it would be a great 
this will help your chess more than watching blitz chess because we i'm going to go into my thought process about how how i would solve these positions and that's going to tell you what you should really be thinking of in, in when you're playing competitive game of chess and you're in a very critical position and maybe when you feel there's a win there a critical moment uh, so I think it could be useful to know how a grandmaster thinks so you can try to replicate that thought process and um, we'll start off with this puzzle and you you can start having a look at the position and this is white to play and win I would also say that some of the most imaginative and strongest chess players in the world they they say studying studies um, is the thing that's made them that, that real next jump in their chess so for example uh, Jabava said that it's he, he, he most important for him was studies to get better at chess and uh, I think they're, they're a great thing to do so uh, before we do that I just say hello to everyone in the chat and then we get going but you can start thinking about this and let's just remember that these are not going to be one move solutions uh, and that's the first thing to bear in mind so these are going to be multiple moves and uh, you've got to try to work your way through them and as in a real game situation you don't just play a move and then think after you've played it you've got to try to work out as much as you can before you dive in and and, and play a move obviously foresight and thinking forwards so um anyway hello to everyone in the chat so uh, hello mary hope you're having a good sunday mary and uh hello cj stephen chess buff uh, will be fine uh, everyone else in the chat someone asking if ali is iranian he was originally iranian uh, and he kept, moved to moved to london from iran i think when he was about 12 years old something like that so he was uh he he was indeed from tehran i, I believe originally and let's have a think about this one so we're going to start with this one and this is a, um a study that was prepared by a guy called mario matus and this guy is a very sort of unheard of hero or of beautiful studies not many people have heard his name but he came up with a number of fantastic ideas like this and it's white to play and win and the first thing i would do in this position is have a look at the forcing moves and ways that i can immediately attack that king and see if they work and the first thing you should do in these situations is is start don't jumble your mind up with various lines start by looking at the first thing that comes to your mind and um once you've done that just try to work your way through so you can eliminate that one thought for if, you, if it doesn't work you move on to the next first move but start with one move and generally the first move you think of is the one you should just analyze because you, you've got to go with your instincts which will get better as you improve so in this position i'll be looking at any checks see if they work so i'll be looking and we're not going to move the pieces i'm just going to say this is going to be very hard so i'm not a lesson but it's going to be very hard today but you know we we'll try to work through it and i'd be looking at for example pawn forwards check and then i'd be thinking okay my opponent will then move his king to g8 and in that position do i have a good follow-up and i think it's clear that the answer is no there's no way in that position after i move there he goes there to, to do anything so i'd be like okay we're going to eliminate the move g7 from our thoughts we don't need to think about this option anymore and this is what we call the process of elimination when we're calculating my next idea i'd be looking at other checks well this one is clearly bad we can rule that one out this one is the only other check but then after queen takes bishop it's check back it doesn't work the next thing i'd be thinking of oh um i have to make sure uh i don't mess up at least analysis here i hope i don't the next thing i'll be looking at is can i create any threats so i want to win this how do i create threats so i'll be looking okay well you know pawn takes h7 would be quite a nice idea but it's quick to see that i don't have time to do this because black can go queen takes bishop 
and that is a check and I don't I don't want that to to happen so I've, I've got to realize actually there's a bit of a threat to my position Queen takes Bishop so I've now got to think of my opponent's idea in a way I can stop this idea and create a threat and I think as a couple of you have seen the right move to play um, and this has been found by both Voltec and Melkor and by Mary Hatman is Queen C8 and Queen C8 and we're trying to we're just trying to think this through creates a threat and I hope most of you can see what the threat is well first of all it defends our Bishop which is great but secondly after Queen C8 we're threatening what move anyone tell me what move we're threatening it is in the chat already but if we move on Queen there what move do we want to play next which would force a win yes Mary that's correct yes great wolf that is correct we want to play Queen here and Bishop e7 check the Queen cannot capture the Bishop because it will be pinned down to the King so this idea creates a nasty threat and then this is the way you should start calculating in real game situations you think okay well if I go there I'm threatening Bishop there check so how does my opponent defend and this is how we're going to build up thinking ahead so what is black's only defense after queen c8 let's see if anyone can solve this so after we move our queen there what's black's only good way that doesn't lose of stopping bishop e7 yeah well done cj um we'll have a look at mary's idea in a minute and we can look at the other ideas but after queen here well first of all what happens if he goes queen e6 check Let, let's just let's do one thing at a time so we've got to we've got to clarify our thoughts and in a game situation it's very easy to start thinking of dip, many different things at once but you've got to clarify and think of one line at a time just get you know you've got to make this automated so after queen here queen e6 uh votek has and mary have pointed out that you can simply go queen takes e6 we'll show all these lines afterwards but i want to get you in the habit of trying to work things out without moving the pieces and then if pawn takes queen our g pawn can take on h7 and there's no way that black can stop pawn to h8 queen winning the game easily because these two pieces can move but oh, we're going to do this so if we do play queen here we can rule out queen e6 so we now know that queen e6 is not a move now let's have a look next at Mary's knight c7. Now knight c7 defends the queen. So we're now looking at queen c8, knight c7. And let's just try to solve that one first and then we're gonna move on. And this is how you get better at chess in a serious, serious way. You know, how to think correctly. What is the winning idea then? And there is a winning idea. And the winning idea is again to do with the pin on the back rank. So Who's going to see the win after the knight comes to this square? Well, if you take the knight with the queen, I think queen comes to e6, queen takes that pawn, and it's an easy draw. Let's remember, black will get a move. So you don't have time to simply go queen takes knight. Black has three pawns, and he can come here and take this pawn with check. So it's not that one. So queen here, knight here. And again, if you're trying to solve this, you need to think more than one move ahead. So maybe chess, uh, called duo has got the right idea, but what's the follow up after black's force move king g8? So we're trying to visualize, think ahead as we would do in a competition. So queen here, knight here, bishop check, and then after king g8, what can you play then? And there is a winning move there. What is the winning move? what is the winning move well done classical duo and well done ko kika it's just pawn takes pawn check because the queen can't take it because the queen is pinned to the king so the only other option after queen to c8 in this position the only other way that black can stop our threat of checking on e7 is by playing king to g8 
Now let's just show those lines quickly. So queen here. Now if you go check here, this is what we've just looked at already. We take the queen, that goes there, and we capture that. And we already analyzed this. And you've got to analyze these things in your head. If you ever lose track of your analysis, then you start from the original position and you just build up to it again. And this is, I lose track all the time of long complicated lines. So I have to go back to the start, try to focus myself a bit more and move, move through the variations. And if you go here, then we can go bishop e7 check. This is our threat. The queen can't take it because of the pin. And after king to this square, uh, the queen is defended. That's the idea. But we can go pawn takes pawn check. And again, the queen can't capture because it's pinned. And this is easy to see. It's, it's winning. We'll checkmate very soon. So after queen c8, king g8, well, the next move is incredibly hard to see and i would be amazed if anyone finds it but this is something let's just have a look so queen there king g8 use the process of elimination you can start suggesting moves there what should white play in that position let me just eliminate this move you can still if i move the position you can still uh... okay so after queen here king g8 what moves are you thinking of there what would you play in a game situation? Let's not move the pieces until we have to. Anyone, anyone have an idea? And the next idea is what makes this puzzle, I think, so pretty and beautiful to the eye. Well, you can't move the bishop to e6. e6 is here. And if you moved it to e7, you'd lose your queen. And if you go pawn takes pawn check, the king goes to h8. And black is safe. Yes, well, well done, Great Wolf, and well done, Merry Hatman. You have the right idea. So let's have a look. So after here, here, well, actually, the first move I would look at there, to be to be honest, is you know, if I if I was looking at this, I'd be looking at pawn takes one of these pawns because it's a check so i'd be looking at queen here king here and probably taking this one check which a couple of you have suggested or classical duo as well as a vogta but then you're not again your analysis all i'd say is like yeah it's 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 good to suggest moves but it, we're trying to get in a real game situation and of course in a real game situation you have it doesn't stop there and after pawn takes pawn in that position check king takes if we don't find a win for white then we can't do it so the queen comes back check the king comes back to g8 and we can now is this not winning let's have a look so queen here king here check ah oh, okay so if i take the pawn again i'm using the process of elimination white is winning so here here takes takes because now the queen can come back and finally get to the g7 square so queen here here takes king takes queen to h3 check the king comes to g8 and our queen comes to the g file check and comes down here checkmate so using the process of elimination if i was in a real game i'd be like okay queen there king there pawn takes pawn check my opponent can't take that pawn but what happens if he moves his king to g8 and if I can't find a good move there after king g8 to h8, sorry, in the corner, then I'd probably realize that pawn takes pawn is not the best move. The threat is stronger than the execution. Um, hello, Blair. I hope you're doing well. I hope, I hope you had a restful day yesterday. And again, Kokika um, saying take the pawn and somehow make the king with the bishop. Yeah, I mean... You, you can't play chess like this in a blitz game that's the way you should think because you've got to think quickly you've got to be like i go with my instincts and hopefully it'll work out but in a real tournament situation you have to avoid ifs and buts you have to have concrete analysis so um after queen here king here pawn takes pawn check the king goes there and if we go pawn takes this pawn check queen takes pawn we'll recheck the black 
the White King, and that clearly doesn't work. Um, and um, you have a streaming match tomorrow, Blair says. Uh, uh, okay, who, who are you playing, Blair, tomorrow? But someone, by the way, has the right answer. Um, so congratulations to Baird Rush, who has the right answer. And I think we're going to get to that position shortly because this is such a hard puzzle. We're going to have to, you, you can't solve it for an original position. We can try a little bit first, but I think we're going to have to put it on the board. So the idea, the winning idea is queen here. We know now that black has to go king here. Now we know that any of our pawn moves don't really do anything, but the winning idea is queen here, king here, and now the amazing bishop c7. I hope everyone can at least see the idea who's watching us. Now the idea is we're attacking the queen there, so black has to go queen takes our queen on c8, and then we can go pawn takes pawn, check to the king on g8. And let's just see how awake you are. If the king comes back to f8, what do we play in that variation? So here, 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 check, and the king comes back to f8. And let's try and work this out without moving to pieces, because this is great exercise for you. Even if this is really, really hard, and it will be, because it's very hard. If you can just try and imagine the pieces moving, you're doing great. And yes, bishop d6 would be checkmate. We'll show all these lines in a minute. So where does the black king have to go? The black king has to go in the corner there. And then white can try the amazing idea of moving the bishop to e5, threatening any king move checkmate. One of the rare situations you, where you can move the king and it will be checkmate. So can any, everyone see that? Let's do it again. King here, queen here, king here. And we want to get our bishop to this square here. So bishop here, queen takes queen, pawn takes pawn, check, king h8, bishop e5. Now, before we move on, um, can anyone see, let's keep going. What What is, uh, um, well, the king can't go to h7 in that position because there's a pawn on h7. So if you're losing the calculation, start from the original position. What is... It is a very tough, crazy puzzle, this one. Really, really hard. But we're doing great. We're working for it. And this is how you would be thinking or should be thinking if you're in a tournament situation and you realize that in a position like this, there must be something. You've got to work it out without moving the pieces. So hang on a minute. So what is Black's only defensive idea? Let's try to work it out. So now in a real game, you'd have to think, what can Black do there without moving a piece here? And as soon as, you know, at some point you have to move, but you've got to exhaust all, everything you can think of first or lose on time. But let's imagine time is not an issue. So queen here, king here, bishop c7, queen takes c8, pawn takes here, king to h8, bishop to e5. What's black's only move there? Well, queen to e6 check, I just go king takes queen. Uh, bed rush because remember there's no pawn on f7 so you can't go queen e6 can anyone find the defensive move um if you give the king an escape square by moving the h pawn i will go king g6 checkmate so for example h6 king g6 will be checkmate in that position um if you go queen to g8 here in that position we'll look at all these in a minute if i can remember them i will go king bishop check and if you go queen to g7 i will go pawn to f f8 rook checkmate or queen if i want to play normal so the only defensive move is queen c5 well done martin with the idea of if i move my king you can take the bishop with the queen and give a check and if I move my pawn you can go queen takes pawn check now it is very hard and I think what we would do rather than trying to solve any further than that because it's a very intense calculation obviously 
someone who's a grandmaster by you know or, or an IM or, or like let's say over 2200 I think I would say to them I'd want to not move the pieces on the board I want to if this is a problem I'm trying to solve I'd like right well I can see Queen C5 is the move I want to continue my analysis and improve my visualization uh, I'm quite slow at calculating I'm going to be look I'm going to be honest compared to Hikaru Nakamura and these other grandmasters I'm quite slow um, but I'm quite good in a tournament situation because uh, I'm, I've trained myself and I, I have time and I, I know the right process which I'm trying to teach you now so let's have a look at everything we looked at first of all so we've agreed that Queen here is the right move okay now we know that King g8 is the only defense working through the possibilities and we know that both of these moves do not work for example pawn takes f7 check black rechecks us we don't get anywhere if we go pawn takes h7 check then black should not capture with the king this would be a horrendous move because he opens himself up for the queen to come in here with checkmate there's nothing black can do but if black moves the king to this square then black is safe there's no good move for white here because black now has this escape square which he doesn't have in the other variation so the only way to try and win this position is to play the amazing bishop c7 an incredible move now after this move black only has one option so he's forced if he moves the king back we either have bishop d6 or g7 winning so he must play queen takes bishop and we now know that pawn takes here is check correct if the king goes here we checkmate it not like that it's a weird way but you see king here bishop here checkmate so he has to go here and now the idea is this incredible bishop e5 and now maybe for those of you who couldn't follow it previously it's become a little bit clearer now white is threatening two checkmates king g5 or king e7 checkmate so let's say black try to get his knight around to help I don't think I've ever in my whole life checkmated my opponent by moving my king because uh, the only way you can checkmate is by a discovered check but here this is checkmate because the king is trapped in the corner by the pawn and the bishop so black has to do something a little bit urgent now uh, someone earlier suggested bit queen e6 and this is a very common mistake in calculations because you were visualizing that black still had a pawn on e6 but of course there's no pawn and someone else was suggesting move this pawn to give the king an escape square but now you lose control of g6 so king g6 is checkmate um and yeah king 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 e7 rather than king g5 well they're both checkmate in one move jack 24 so checkmate in one move i take it we also looked at queen g8 we've already looked at this move and this move is going to be checkmate as i said for those of you who are following because after here i recommended we actually get a rook there just to show off a little bit checkmate this is another way to checkmate so the only defense in this position is queen c5 which well done to mary hatman martin found this and unbelievably now we come to the second part of the puzzle and this is where in my eyes is even more beautiful than the first part what is the winning plan for white and this is phenomenal and when i first saw this when i first saw this i was like wow this is incredible this is this is chess art this is this is what for me is very joyous these you know you, i've said this so many times there's beautiful things in life right you, you go and look at a picture lovely you know let you know like uh, mona lisa but some chess puzzles are even more beautiful even more beautiful than the best piece of art in the world and that's why i love chess and that's why i play chess okay now if you play let's let's try to work this out let's try to work this out now again we know it's a study so we can look at those moves merry but also our thought process is exactly the same it should be in a game even though it's a study we know that in a game of chess we'd be thinking the same way so it's the same process now the first thing we can do 
is what happens if we move our king with check this is again the process of elimination and we can visualize this immediately so let's say king f5 well you have to work this out again don't guess you can't guess in these positions well after king f5 someone tell me what what's going to happen what's going to happen after king f5 so let's eliminate these two moves because if it's not a king move we have to find something else so okay keep going yeah yeah keep going tell me king takes queen then i don't just want one move answers you've got it you've got it okay i know it should be simple but let's remember there's a range of people probably watching this so let's try to just go as far down the variation as you can because we're still threatening to queen that pawn so let's say king here check the same as with um yes mary thank you J thank you for making it clear so after one of these king moves let's try to visualize check the idea of black's move is he can take the bishop getting rid of that attacking piece we have to go king takes queen and then we're threatening to queen the pawn with check but black can play king here stopping the pawn and if the white then goes we'll have a look at the second in that position if white then goes king e6 trying to go king e7 and here black can simply go king to f8 and white has nothing so if we tried this move or king e6 it's exactly the same black has to go here he's forced to play this and in this position he has to go here he's forced to play this and after this move this is the very simple move that gives black a winning position black can now just queen one of his ari ari or ari pawns so in our calculations after the move queen c5 we can now and this is where it should actually be quite simple i say simple but you know it's it's uh not simple of course and remember i don't want anyone to use a computer on this it's completely pointless to use a computer you're not helping yourself or anyone else i'm sure no one is not but just in case so we now can eliminate these moves from our thought process so we've got to think next what else can we play <coughs> well we can eliminate this move because if we play here there's a check and after anything the king can come to g8 so we're not doing well so we now got to look the only option is to move the bishop now if we move the bishop to one of these two squares black will take that bishop and it will be check so now you have to really you've eliminated a lot of the uh, possibilities and you can now work out that this has to be because there's nothing else you can't move your bishop on this diagonal we can eliminate that because we need the bishop attacking the king the only two possible moves is do you move the bishop to b2 or do you move the bishop to a1 with the idea if you make one of these moves you can move the king and you're trying to give checkmate so have a think about this which is the right move bishop b2 or bishop a1 and why why is it the right move why is it the right move why is it the right move and i'm certainly not making this up as i go along this is a very famous study by mario uh, matios and again we're just trying to go through the thought process so i've got to catch up in the chat if i if i've missed some of the chat excuse me it's the way it happens um da, 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 da. okay so but why i want you to tell me why 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 is why is a certain move the right move so people are saying bishop a1 because there's no check and queen takes uh queen takes b2 but try to think a little bit further we've got the f pawn as well we've got two checkmate ideas moving the king and pushing the pawn so um let's keep going let's keep going yeah well bishop b2 you've got to think a little bit further you're not thinking further enough to check let's say the king goes here check queen takes bishop pawn there equals queen checkmate what's wrong with bishop a1 is there anything wrong with bishop a1 it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you sure again if you did that in a game and you you just think um if you just did this in a game and you you, you think this you, you you could throw away the win you have to be very 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 sure about the answer and i at the moment um we've got to just okay so let's try there's obviously a difference let's try to work out what it is I think bishop b2 because white simply has an extra tempo against this one 
Well, this is really just calculation is how you're going to work this out. And again, if we go through the process, which um, I mentioned we should be thinking of, is the process of elimination. So let's let's just do this. We're not again. Maybe what we're doing now, and it's quite hard, obviously, because we're we're doing this live in a stream. But we should take one of those moves and just look at one of those moves. If we don't think, if we think one of these moves wins, we don't need to look at the other move. If you've got two different wins, you don't need to calculate both of them. You just calculate one of them. So the first move we should look at is, let's say, bishop a1. Let's have a look at bishop a1 first. Now, how on earth, after bishop a1, is black going to defend from a king move checkmate? So this idea, and I'm, I'm not going to move it, has the idea of the king wants to move, giving checkmate to the black king. So what on earth can black do after bishop to a1 and i've got to i've got to work this out as well so queen a3 well then i go king e6 check don't i does that win martin queen takes bishop pawn up queen so bishop here queen attacks the bishop I just go king let's say e6 check you have to take my bishop and then i queen so i don't think we can eliminate i think we can eliminate queen a3 right isn't it the same with any move like queen g1 queen c1 it's the same we go king e6 check the queen takes the bishop and we queen am i missing anything there so what am i missing bishop a1 the queen cannot attack the bishop is that right So we can eliminate, and this is what you should be thinking of in a game situation. You should be thinking the queen goes here, and we've got to try to work this out. Well, any queen move to attack the bishop on that square, we can eliminate any queen move because of king e6 and pawn on queen checkmate. So another idea is one move like a4, which has been stopped, doesn't stop our threat. We go king e6 checkmate. The whole point of moving the bishop here is that we're threatening king e6 checkmate. So if you play a4 here, this is our idea. Well, okay, it's checkmate next move. Now, if we play this move and black plays any of these moves, I'll just put it on the board so it's a little bit easier. Attacking the bishop, which looks like a great plan for black, right? Well, it doesn't help because we have two ideas. And one idea is this one again, the same idea. It's not checkmate yet. But after you eliminate that bishop, you lose control of f8. So when I do play here, this time I have to get a queen to control this square. It is checkmate. So after bishop a1, there's only one defensive move. And what is that defensive move? Well, most of you are now finding the defensive move. Well done. Well done, Mary. Well done, LGA and everyone else. It can't be any move that allows the white king to... You can't allow the white king to move. So you have to, you have to, in this position, and if I miss your name, I apologise, there's obviously, you know, let me off, there's a lot, lot going on when I'm trying to calculate as well. You have to stop the white king coming here, so what do you play? You have to play knight c7. Yep, yeah. agreed. And after knight c7, this is this is where it's completely beautiful what can we try now it's white to move what can we try now because now the, the white king can't move anywhere because they're all covered all of these squares are covered so you can't do anything so white's got only one way to try and play let's keep going we haven't finished the analysis yet what can white play now what can white play now this we're not analyzing bishop b2 on the first move because using the process of elimination we knew this was the key position it here but we're going to analyze one move at a time as far as we can and we're starting with bishop a1 we've now worked out that knight c7 is the correct move what can white play after that so let's keep going come on people bishop a1 knight c7 can someone finish this line off who can give the whole line now you should be able to work it out 
Now it's clear if we go f8 check, queen takes f8 and black has the g8 square. So that's not the, so bishop a1, knight c7. Anyone, how could the game go? Well, if we go bishop d4 there, black can go queen takes bishop and that will be check. So you only have one move. White only has one move after bishop here, knight c7 to try and keep this going. What's the only move that white can play? Well done, great wolf. Bishop b2 is correct. And then, no, I'm not putting it on the board because the whole point of trying to improve your calculation is to visualize it. We put it on the board at the end. You couldn't put it on the board in a real game. If you're, if you're playing a real game, you can't be like, excuse me, mate, do you, do you mind if I just like move the pieces around a little bit just to make it a little bit easier for me to calculate? Oh, very kind of you. You can't do that. <laughs> okay, so let's try to work it out. Okay, bishop here, knight c7 forced. Bishop b2 and now a4, bishop to b a1. I'm gonna put this on the board in a minute. A3 and we run out of moves. And I'm hoping everyone can see this. This is a position where we're trying to actually, bizarrely, the whole point of this position now is we're trying to put black in what's called Zugzwang, German term. And, and, and Zugzwang means basically, basically uh, you're forced to move and make a mistake. You are forced to play an error, to make an error. Thank you for subscribing. So let's just have a think about this. We're only looking at Bishop A1, but I will move the pieces in a minute and it will become clear. But Bishop A1, and again, this is the process elimination. We know that black has to go knight c7, bishop a1, knight c7. We can only go bishop b2. Now black can't move the queen anywhere because it might allow the king to move or for us to queen. So there's nowhere the queen can move. Now there's nowhere the knight on c7 can move to because if that moves, it allows us to go king e6. So what else can we move? If we move the h pawn, what would be the problem after bishop a1, knight c7, Bishop b2, let's say h5. Why, why can't the h, h pawn move there? Why can't black move the h pawn in, the, in, in those positions after bishop a1, knight c7, bishop b2, h5? King g6, correct. So he has to go a4. And then we go bishop a1, and then he goes a3. And all of a sudden, in that line, you can't go bishop b2 anymore because a pawn takes bishop. So you're losing. So let's have a look at that. Now we can look at it. Now we've worked it out. So in a real game situation, we'd have to eliminate bishop a1. So if you go bishop a1, black has to stop king to this square, checkmate, as we know now. So the only way black can do that, his queen can't move now. The queen is trapped in this situation. The queen can't move. Let's, that's very important. If it tries to check our king, well, our king moves and we get this checkmate. So the queen has to stop the king and stop the f-pawn. So you have to go here, taking away the e6 square. Now, we can't do anything here as white. We can't move our king. We move the pawn, we lose the pawn. We move our bishop to any of these squares. Black can capture it with a winning position. So we have to play this move. It's forced. Now, black can't move the knight. If black moves the knight, let's say black moves the knight there, check. Okay, well, what's how does white win now? white to play white to play and now win and this is a little bit more than one move but how does white win this position king e6 and after knight c3 what what do we do next or king king f5 not so clear because when you move the knight is check so let's go let's go king e6 so in this position what's the winning plan for white here very good we go king e6 check black has to block the check and now black can't control the f pawn because we can take here check and you have to take the bishop and now you're no longer controlling here so we go there checkmate so if we go back to this position we can rule out the idea that this knight can move it can't move now what about the h pawn if the h pawn moves it gives away the g6 square so we can move here and that's going to be checkmate so you can't move this pawn as we already know the queen can't move anywhere because if the queen moves the king just goes here and we're going to be walking into checkmate but black does have this a pawn and the pawn can go here. What's white's only move now? White's only move is to move the bishop back to a1. There's nothing else. You can't move the king. You move the pawn, you lose it. 
you can't move the bishop to these squares you get captured so you have to move the bishop to a1 and now after a3 you suddenly can't go bishop b2 anymore because if you play bishop b2 in this position black takes the bishop and of course you're losing so now the whole point of this puzzle becomes clear and after queen c5 we can rule out bishop a1 because of that sequence if you play queen f8 at any situation then i go king f5 check queen g7 pawn to f8 checkmate let's show that one so if we go bishop to a1 well i think we know what the solution is now but let's have a look sorry uh queen c5 bishop to a1 and now knight here okay so here at some point someone was saying if you move the queen to this square well black now loses control of the white king our king can now move here it couldn't do before that position is check black has to block it and then we go here i get a rook because it's flasher checkmate so the only way you can do this let's go back if we go through the puzzle is if we go bishop to a1 well that's just losing we've already seen that so what about bishop b2 now someone tell me the winning variation someone just type out bishop b2 so bishop b2 tell me how the game should end after bishop b2 yes well done dark side you you've got it i know you, you mistyped it but now the difference is and i know this is really hard to grasp but you should be able to now see that if we go bishop to b2 not to a1 there's a major difference there's a big difference here how should the game continue we're threatening king e6 checkmate again so you have to play knight c7 right everyone agree you have to move the knight to c7 there's nothing else to do you have to move the knight to the square agreed and now when the knight moves here what's the only move that white can play what is the only move white can play merry hat man again thank you for typing it out you have to play bishop a1 you can't do anything else now black is nearly in zugzwang he can't move the h pawn king g6 checkmate he can't move the knight king e6 checkmate the knight's controlling that square he can't move the queen our king will move checkmate so he can only move the a pawn and now the difference between this and the last line is that we go bishop b2 what can black move well he can only move the a pawn this guy here so he plays a3 what do we play now we move our bishop where back to a1 what is the only move that black can play he can't move any of these he's got to move the a pawn a2 uh hello grandmaster guri thank you for the raid um we're actually just looking at some puzzles today if you've come and raided we're looking at the end of a beautiful study here probably not going to play much chess today it's more like getting to the thought process and looking at some beautiful studies but thank you very much for the raid and everyone else who's come over and now what does white play now he plays bishop b2 what's black's only move let's say a1 we take it and okay you can try it now you've run out of the a pawn so you have to move the h pawn the knight or the queen let someone give me a move someone give me a move well i think a chess drinker was saying what if queen f2 check well as soon as the queen moves it doesn't matter where we can move our king one of these two squares and it's going to be check mate for example king here and all of a sudden it's checkmate next move you can only block the check with your queen and i would take your queen so what else can black try here anything else you can try guys you can try a move from black what else do you want to try anyone else want to recommend a move from black here anyone black is in what we call zugzwang whatever black plays okay you play h6 you lose the g6 square king there checkmate next move i take your queen the source for this i mentioned at the start it's um a mario uh, mateos puzzle and he's a very famous yet not very well known uh, creator of puzzles okay we have another suggestion if you go queen f8 what do we play here well now i think this one's correct check and black only blocks it and it's checkmate next move by queening or rooking or rooking okay so what else well we have knight d5 and this is very similar to a, ch a checkmate we see before now you don't want to move your king where it could be a check but we go here and again black has to block this check let's say he blocks with the knight there and now in this position 
you simply take this one because the queen is also doing a very good job of controlling that square you have to take here and again we queen the pawn with check mate and so it's an unbelievable puzzle the first start of the puzzle is insane but i think this position here is an incredibly good puzzle for anyone at any strength to really improve your chess and i would recommend you know we're going to move on to another puzzle but uh, if you if you want to see this again i'll put this video up on youtube but if you give this position to anyone you know who plays chess and you tell them it's white to play and win it's a beautiful study that will force you to calculate properly because you should be able to work out that you only have two squares to move the bishop to one of them bishop a1 is losing because it's white who's going to get in trouble after the pawn goes here white's run out of moves white is in zugzwang white can't move anything here that avoids losing and if you go back we had a look at the start of the puzzle earlier on then if we go to this square instead of a1 it's black who's going to run out of moves in this position here here bishop b2 a3 bishop a1 a2 bishop b2 it's incredible very hard to get the king around. <laughs>